Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Big God versus C Deck Gaming. Game number two coming your way. C Deck. Oh boy, looking strong in game number one. Of course, you're watching the Dota 2 Asia Championships. We're here in the Chinese qualifier in the group stages. I'm Zayori, joined again by Blaze. Blaze, man, what's going on? How are you feeling after game one? I'm really pumped to see C Deck in action once again. Maybe it was just running a train all over them. I really thought it would be the Slurk getting going. I've seen Mikasa do a lot of snowball type stuff. And I was thinking about what really could be accomplished in the late game with those heroes and troll while really really powerful as a carry in general doesn't like have that crazy late game that maybe a slurk or a medusa or certainly can but it didn't give them the chance didn't give them any breathing room yeah. at all they just took them they fought in the trenches they fought on the mountaintops and eh, big god it shows that gods can bleed but yeah <laughs> I don't know, man. This is this is going to be a, a more intense uh, combo. I mean, when you see the Faceless Void Skywrath coming at you, know they're they're been shaken in their confidence to run Burning as a like the only person they can rely upon, and they're probably going to tone it down as far as this whole like tri greedy tri core aspect. I would say so. Uh, opening with the Brewmaster, get a little tempo control in here for C deck. It was banned out in the last game, and this go round he will make it through. Big God, they will stick. To true to their bands. Juggernaut and uh, Lycan, I believe uh, the same thing they banned last go around. Um, so we will see a little switcheroonie. Void and Skywrath grabbed by Big God and well, Skywrath, very good against the Brewmaster and natural synergy with the Faceless Void, Mystic Flare on top of the Chrono, but C Deck right there with another very popular support in this meta, and it's the Demon Witch, good old Lion. Yeah, really, really good with that buff. He was already pretty decent in the right Five situation, but in this case here, not only having the powerful Disables and, and the Nukes, but just getting a lot of right click damage. I mean, you have a zero mm -hmm. armor Skywrath that you're going up against, so you trade hits with him. Not only is the attack speed really slow because of the lack of agility since that recent patch, but plus 7 damage on Lion just goes 100% into his health pool, so if you're looking to fight and get rambunctious early, Lion's a great hero, and if you're looking to respond to desperate situations against non-BKB heroes, he's your man too. He really is able to keep people alive and to just control the fights at almost as effectively as a Brewmaster, but we all know what the Brewmaster can do, and in Maybe's hands, I believe in particular, this is going to be uh, very fun to see. Yep, uh, always a fun hero to watch, that's uh, that's for sure, as these teams take their time with their third and fourth bands. Ooh, One of the things seconds. about Lion that makes him so good as a support is Blink Hex is good at every stage of the game. There isn't Five really a point that that initiation uh -huh. falls off, and Mana Drain having more and more utility as it's great against Illusion heroes, Reserve great against time. Medusa, for example, who's been popping up more and more, so not surprised at all to see, he, uh, see him on the rise. C deck. Probably, uh, well, thinking about banning out some supports at least. Third ban, they'll take out the Sand King. And Big God, they will ban out the Naga Siren. Trying to limit some of the, the carries that CDAC can take here. But time will yeah. tell, Mr. Blaze. Yeah, I mean, right now this is kind of just a basic opener for Big God. They can expand this draft to do a whole lot more. Obviously, they, they know that they can run the Void in the offlane. Whether or not they want to go that route really depends on really how quickly this game they think will end. I mean, if they put him as the carry, he'll be active with a Mask of Madness, maybe a Midas, maybe just uh, treads BK into BKB and Maelstrom and stuff like that. Like, he can get online very early if he's in the safe lane. In the offlane, not so much. He's a walking ultimate, and that later on scales. And so, essentially, Essentially, it depends on Big God learn their lesson and say, let's not go greedy, let's just take this core hero and give him the farm he needs, and then go mm -hmm. for something that's more fighty in the offlane, or if they're really just going to turn it and say, well, we just didn't execute po properly enough, go ahead and go for the void in the offlane, and then still pick up something really uh, greedy and item-dependent for burning. Mm -hmm. Well, C deck will limit one of those greedy choices uh, choices by fourth banning out the Morphling. Mm -hmm. Makes some sense there. And uh, Big God, they will ban out the Shadow Fiend, a hero that C deck have been running a little bit. I think they've played him uh, at least a couple times on this patch. I was going through my Star Ladder notes earlier today, and I think that popped up on my, uh, my C deck research. So, smart ban from Big God. We'll see what they want to do with this pick, and it is the Dusa once Jeez. more. So now they've got the Faceless Void to set it up, probably headed to the off lane most likely, but last time they sent Dusa mid with Burning, so still the laning phase a little ambiguous from the Dire.
Yeah, a lot of ways they can go with it, and it really just depends on who's the most confident on that avoid at this point in time. Uh, we've seen Zhao 8 and we've seen RTK make performances happen on those heroes, but mm -hmm. as far as like the current iteration of the team and talking about who's calling the shots, who's making the initiation plays, and who's really just quick on the trigger, uh, that's going to be the, the real question here, because uh, the Brewmaster, the Void Skyrath is a counterpick to that. We obviously know that from 6.81. Uh, you don't want to let the split go off, so you chrono him or you silence him. But Here if he's careful on his positioning, he can blink dodge and he can how maneuver you. So it really comes down to that. If it's a mid matchup, Brewmaster versus Medusa, he also has the added benefit of getting to drunk and haze Medusa, and that forces her to often use her Mystic Snake in a way that she would not prefer. Yeah, exactly. And um, you know, last game I was surprised to see Medusa picked up so early because she is definitely a hero that uh, has some counters, and Quas Wex Invoker is mm -hmm. certainly one of them. You hit her with an EMP, and well, that's a significant portion of her tankiness uh, diminished. So smart choice from C Deck. I'd be very surprised if this wasn't a Quas Wex Invoker, and. You know, for Big God, yeah, you've got the Void to kind of make some space for the Dusa in team fights. You can sit outside the Chrono and lay in the the split shots, but getting to that team fight stage and getting your Dusa big enough for that to hurt is uh, not always an easy feat. And this Invoker could very quickly just control this game and stop Big God from getting that momentum they need for this draft to work. Yeah. Still very curious what they're going to put out for SYDM. He has kind of a small historical hero pool because, honestly, he's really only played as a stand-in until this past month. So uh, we'll see what core he wants to pick up here, something with a little bit of extra oomph to it, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, right now the Brewmaster and the Invoker are interchangeable between both Maybe and Zhao Hong. Both of them have been playing uh, those heroes a little bit differently between the two of them, like what builds they go, but they're both formidable. And that just comes down to preference and uh, who they want to have uh, more active early on. But still, SYDM, he, he's a pretty big linchpin here, and uh, picking a hero that Two won't be heavily ganked be. by a Rubik Skyrath that uh, will be able to do Five the right seconds. utility of damage to Medusa, I don't mm -hmm. know, there are only a handful of options in my mind, but we'll have to see reserve what time. he's up to in just a moment and here. Uh, reserve times yeah. tap through, they go for the Dazzle for now, and they'll leave their core, uh, kind of table it for the last pick. Mm-hmm. They sure will. So Dazzle, yeah, pretty good here. I don't see anything that is super obvious as to why Dazzle is the go-to support for them. Maybe it'll kind of come to light with this uh, final pick. Ten seconds to pick. Hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of potential. I mean, one cool thing is Dazzle uh, getting spell stolen by Rubik isn't the end of the world. Like, there's a lot of That's supports true. with one big cooldown, and you don't want to give that away. You're already maybe risking the finger of death in the primal split steal. But if you pick short cooldown heroes like the Invoker and the Dazzle, he doesn't get to profit off of that very much. And mm -hmm. another thing is the defensive weave is going to be very important if the game does go a little bit later. It's the mm -hmm. uh, same utility against uh, Gyrocopter as against Medusa. She's dishing out AoE physical damage, and you want to counteract this. So this means yeah. they might have to go for a mech as early, if at all, and they Don't won't have to worry mech. about Vlads and other armor auras uh, in that capacity. So I think the Dazzle's good for just giving team longevity, but it shows they want an offensive final pick. Yep, also uh, good against potential BKBs that could come out, something that Dusa and Void may want to consider, slash become a necessity as this game goes on. We'll see the final pick from Big God, though. It's an offlaner, and it's the Bat Rider, a hero that's definitely fallen off a bit in popularity, but still very potent as a fifth pocket pick, and that's where he'll be shown here. Nice tempo controller for Big God. Yep, uh, they are have some good experience running that. Obviously, in the offlane is where it's going to be starting. The Templar Assassin is going to be the last pick. That's S Y here. What we're gonna most likely is an offlane Brewmaster as well as, of course, the offlane Batrider. Uh, again, the role switch on Big God is very frequent, but ROTK is the one that's been playing the Batrider the most recently. So excited to see how aggressive he gets. You know, he is a very vocal individual. So when he goes for a blank lasso, yeah, everybody in the room is gonna and they're gonna look to follow suit. <laughs> uh, a really cool thing about Blink uh, Batrider plus Medusa is uh, th it's one of the things that kind of forces. You to, your team to do one of two things. If the lasso comes out and you get the four staff away, since they don't really have anything but a hex to instantly counter initiate, uh, mm -hmm. essentially, if the Medusa is behind the Bat Rider, she pops her Stone Gates, and you have either the choice to let your, that hero die and immediately turn it into a 5v4, or do something about it, and then you have your team get Stone Gazed, and you're in a really bad way. So, really, I think it comes down to lane a little bit for C deck once again, and the couple of Bruce Slits. 
Yes, uh, those first blue, brew splits, always crucial, and uh, BG can get aggressive on the brew, force the, especially that first one out defensively. That can be a, a, a big victory in that window when he's normally very strong. I feel like the same kind of goes for the Bat Rider, though. If ROTK is able to get a fast blink around the 10 minute mark, maybe a little bit earlier <laughs> on, BG can really get that momentum going. But conversely, if he gets shut down, zoned out, or he gets a stack jacked or something like that in the jungle, uh, I see BG's life just getting that much more difficult. Mm -hmm. And actually, they might safe lane the Bat Rider. Sending Zhao Wei to the off lane on the face of Void would be okay. an okay move if ROTK is able to get that extremely fast blink dagger you're talking about, anyways. What they can yeah. do is they can stack the jungle for him and for burning, and then ROTK can still get a ton of farm. They're ro making their rotations based on what they are, are seeing from the enemy's movements, and it is going to be burning to the safe lane, and it is going to be ROTK Bat Rider mid. All right, so this is very different than I think you would guess that these that this laning phase would go for uh, the dire side, and maybe they'll even continue to rotate as they're still moving heroes around. The only thing we know is Zhao Eight will be off lane on that faceless void. They've still got four heroes grouped huh. up in the mid, but yeah, looking at RTK's items, oof, two pulled tangos and two branches gonna rush that bottle. On the Radiant side for C deck, looks like the offlane player uh, who played the Void last game will be on the Brewmaster. Mikasa goes mid on the Templar Assassin, which gives them a safe lane try. Uh, Invoker played by maybe Garter uh, playing on the Lion, and that'll leave Q here for the Shadow Priest Dazzle. Yep. And looking over at Big God, we're going to have Zhao Wei's faces void in the offlane. Going for a nice little block here where he lets one through and pulls the creep wave back thereafter. We're going to have in the solo mid, or RTK's a Bat Rider, that bottle should do some work. And of course the Firefly being great against the defensive attribute of Refraction in that matchup. Mm -hmm. But up top you're going to see Burning have a much better time finding CS up there. And he, But he is up against that Brewmaster and we talked about that Drunken Haze. The supports are going to be Ice Ice on the Rubik as well as Lanham on the Skywrath, two very squishy supports, and uh, that's where the, the mid matchup becomes even more important. It's not just RTK getting early farm, it's shutting down SYD and Mikasa. Mm -hmm. And actually, he's exactly. going deep oh, right now. This eight could be a stacks. kill attempt here. Eight stacks of the sticky, he does a lot of work, oh. but the refractions there. Mikasa gets the first blood over ROTK. Jeez. What a victory for the TA on that one. Well timed refraction. Yeah, I mean, any time it would do pretty much the same thing, but uh, you wanted that 8 just to make sure that you got the most value out of it possible, and that just a little lucky there. I mean, Batrider didn't have that much durability with only 2 armor and uh, that baseline 660 HP, but the first blood and the solo experience going the way of TA, they're just insanely different uh, landing scenarios coming out as a result of that, and it was oh, yeah. so close, so yeah, close to being the other way around. I, I've only seen this mid matchup a couple of times as Bat Rider mid is not really that common. Very low base damage and not that same force he used to be, but this is actually the uh, one matchup where he can really shine against the TA as you've, we've seen now firsthand and pointed out refraction damage mitigation doesn't really do a hell of a lot. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Xiao Wei gets a little aggressive. He'll get hexed up as he tries to time walk away. Cold snap almost secures the kill, but he's still able to make it down. Will salve up and he does live. Uh -huh. so we'll get a DD rune just to cover it up for their team as a whole. And man, with the Sav, he should have just walked back to the lane and get some boots early. Mikasa taking some hits again. The magic stick is full this time around, so RTK will not go for the tower dive, but still forcing her off the wave. And uh, I really think it would have been huge if C Deck were able to snowball the Templar Assassin here. Getting the ability to essentially like one or two shot uh, some of these supports with extremely low armor. Uh, the TA would just be unstoppable, but as it is, RTK is suppressing her quite well with a little bit of luck on his side, though now... Is he really suppressing her, though? Look at the CS difference. 14-2 and two on Mikasa, and uh, this Bat Rider with only 8 last hits. I, f I feel like Mikasa is handling himself really well in this difficult matchup. Yeah, I mean, he's doing the best he can, and he is going to, with the Magic Stick, kind of sustain a little bit better from time to time, but Bottom. a one Bottle Crow... Oh, shall we? Very far forward, actually. That's a yep. He's in a lot of trouble, but will still tracks. live. It looks like mm -hmm. a little bit of time wall or a uh, backtrack helping him out there. Boots and stout shield, all he's going to need to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought he was dead for sure. Yeah. So I mean, he is going to have to, you know, fall back a little bit, just farm behind his tower for a couple of creeps, and then maybe move back to the base to, to fuel up there. But uh, the Quas Wex Invoker isn't as destructive in the other game. He can control a little bit better. We saw the EMP do some work. But end of the day, he's not like sun striking for kills. He's not doing the hard right click damage. Mm -hmm. And as far as that matchup that we keep going back to, as it is probably the, the most interesting one, uh, the Bat Rider. 
like he loses out at this quick moment where Mikasa has uh, no real concern over the Firefly, but the RTK bottle crows once, he gets full HP and mana, and then he gets to control another rune thanks to his supports, and mm -hmm. suddenly Mikasa doesn't have anything to do with jungle, and that's what he's going to do. All right, so he moves into some Alpha Wolves here. Yeah, giving the Bat Rider a lot of space. Four-minute rune. Mikasa going to guess the bottom. We'll see what he can find. It will be the Bounty Rune. Up top, Regeneration goes into the bottle of ROTK. Both mid laners topped off and headed back to lane with a little bit of reinforcements. Q on the Dazzle is level 3, so has his spread of abilities. And uh, Rubik going to make his way over. Ice Ice found his level 2 and ready to support his Bat Rider. So they're just going to change the matchup entirely. The Bat Rider, the Brewmaster wasn't getting much on top lane because of some really good creep equilibrium by Burning, as you would expect. So he goes mid, he gets a, a duo experience here with the Dazzle's help, and it's going to be TH to go straight jungle. It's a little awkward, but using the side blades appropriately, you can get the double strikes, and he, yeah, he doesn't feel comfortable going in solo 1v1 against the Bat Rider. It's, Bat Rider okay. is such a good 1v1 laner when he has that full mana pool, and that regen means he's always going to have that. Yeah, this go around C deck kind of employing a similar strategy to what BG did in the last laning phase, where they rotate around and kind of employ that sharing is caring type mentality, mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. everybody at least gets that baseline of farm. Garter trying to harass nice. Xiao Wei. Beautiful Earth Spike on two, and that will keep him safe and sound. So we've got a uh, double ancient sack coming out on the side of the Radiant right. as well on the Dire side. They've got their Eastern camp up a 2-2. Two, two. So the Batrider is going to take to the jungle pretty soon himself, I believe. And that might give Rubik a chance to kind of bounce back. Rubik is a hero you'd love to get level 6 on. Right now, not even level 3. So Ice Ice could definitely benefit from just staying as far from the lane as possible and to get his experience. But rotation after rotation keeps coming through. And we see the Brewmaster getting some nice experience up on the top lane. Yep, uh, soon to be level 4. Uh, not the easiest situation for him, but relative to the Void, they're pretty even. Brew actually uh, maybe doing slightly better. A little more farm, a little bit less experience. Dusa racking up the last hits, though. Burning is our last hit leader, and even with that Drunken Haze making his life a little more difficult. 36 and 11, and now getting a lot of damage into this Tier 1 tower up top alongside the Skywrath Mage. So that is one thing going very well for the Dire side, but again, it is CDEC getting the minor gold and experience edge out of this laning phase, just like we saw in the last match. Yep. So right now everybody's moving in towards the level 6, that's when the sparks are really going to fly, but for now I would have to say the biggest aspect of the game overall is Burning's much better start. He is having a great time uh, here, hitting level 6, he'll probably go for the stone gaze. Now one more point in mana shield to get a little bit more efficiency out of that, and he drains Brewmaster's mana, forces him back off the lane once again, and yeah, he's just having a great time. 42 CS, all from the creeps here. I don't know if he'll go for the Midas again, but we might be seeing two from the side of C deck. We already see one for the Quaswex Invoker, and there's a good chance that uh, Mikasa is going for one as well. Yeah, I would say so. Gloves of Haste has not completed the treads. Also just kind of fits in line with what C deck did last game. They're very comfortable going for these early farming tools, and I mean, pretty impressive last go around how they went for farming tools and were still able to take team fights. Mm -hmm. so I guess some of that is because Big God also went for farming tools, so it kind of zeroes it out a little bit, but not afraid to stay aggressive. We'll see Garter sh uh, scout out Xiao Wei once more, and they'll go blow for blow in the jungle. Turns him into a frog. EMP comes out as the line stun connects. Now the cold snap and Xiao Wei in a lot of trouble. Eat some stick charges and will be able to time walk to the low ground. That magic stick, the make it or break it, Blaze. Yeah, definitely. This is just him living life on the edge, and he is going to be able to get the experience he needs to. Like, if some people say, well, why is he always in the bad position? Why is he always getting gone on? And it's because otherwise he'd be level two. Like, he has to, to make some risky <laughs> maneuvers and to, to get what he can off the lane. But oh, look at this ward coming out on the top lane, along with the smoke gank. Squishy supports, they can't tower dive themselves, but they have full understanding of the bruise positioning, and they are looking to make a play. Yeah, looking at Dire Vision here, just a very little sliver that's of darkness. Medusa will just start poking the tower. They see Brew walking into this little dark area here, and they will scout it out. Lana moving in. They find the Brewmaster. He's not even level 6 yet. Silence okay, will come out. No, okay. TP coming in. Mikasa, they want to turn this around. Lana locked in the tree line. Will just try to TP home. He will live. Ice, ice. Left behind, and... Well, he'll get put six feet under. C deck with a huge reaction. All five oh, yeah. heroes make their way to the top lane. And I'm they not get even a one sure that's trade. worth it. 
I don't think it is, actually. Like, bottom lane, Void's gonna get full experience, full 100% creep wave, get some good tower damage, and the Batrider can just go ahead and go over to the jungle. So, they don't kill off Burning with their 5-man rotation, they just kill off the Rubik, who was in as aggressive as a position you can get anyways. It's just a very low value kill. If it was first yeah. blood, maybe, but since there were two kills already on the board, uh, yeah, I think that Xiao Wei's really happy that everybody kind of bailed out of his side of the map. Well, this will be the pretty fast blink dagger for ROTK. Takes out a lot of stacks and neutrals here. No mud golems. A small stroke of luck on his side. Blink dagger on the way, and a haste rune bottled up at the nine minute mark. Not a bad way to do it. Mikasa finds Ice Ice down at the bottom rune, gets telekinesis, and now support is inbound from the high ground. ROTK with a lasso finds Mikasa, but team support's there. They get the kill on Rubik. ROTK loses all of his mana, and that first lasso and dagger reveal will be a disaster with maybe. Picking up a double on the Invoker. Yeah, now that's a completely different story. You keep Rubik away from Boots, so Mikasa can just keep on running the train over him. The first lasso completely unsuccessful, despite the Blink Dagger being unveiled at the 9 minute mark. Very fast timing for the Blink, and just falls short. We do have a Chronosphere down bottom, maybe something interesting happens there, but with 3 points in Quas, you've already got a decent amount of durability, and we've seen the Dazzle very quick on the TP, though currently does not have one as an inventory. Yeah, Xiao Wei also just lacking on relative damage output right now. Mm -hmm. Gets himself the power treads, but yeah, still not hitting too hard. Also, with only one point in the time lock. Mid lane looks like C deck want to be aggressive. We got two smoked oh. up on the high ground. Brewmaster with the split. Here we go, right on to Wanam. Hex to start it off, and they'll take him down before the split even comes out. Now Telkinis is on the Brewmaster. He will get off the primal split, goes on to the Rubik, only level three, and these Panda Spirits will do a hell of a lot of damage. Now support coming in. ROTK in the front lines, pushing back the Dazzle. C deck really not committing much from this. Happy just to get a one for nil out of the gate. Q stuck inside of a chrono, but gets off the grave after a well-placed tornado from maybe. Now the fight really like breaks out. Q with no magic stick won't be able to keep himself alive. And C deck without the reinforcements here to turn this into a full-on fight. Will trade one for one, support for support. Yeah. Still, I like that Sea Decker kind of cha changing the status quo with their movements there. The first bottom room fight was a lot more successful than that dive, but the big thing here is they're making time where Burning isn't farming. Now, Burning's pushing, and they might actually get a kill on to Mikasa without the refraction. Just barely gets it uh, before yeah. they're able to open up the silence. So he just falls back uh, very comfortable right now, and I don't think they're yeah. going to be able to bring him down. They're continuing on. They're going to dive this tower a bit further. ROTK hit by the Poison Touch. It is only level 1 from Q, so not particularly potent as Burning just continues to get some licks into the tower. Burning did go for the Hand of Midas this game and just gets delivered Blaze. So that takes our Midas count uh, 2 to 1 right now. TA and Invoker on the Radiant and just the Dusa on the Dire. Now, one aspect of this item for Medusa in particular is the fact that she benefits a lot from stats, and you get the well, decent stat gains of strength, agility, and intelligence for naturally every time you level up, and mm -hmm. also that means you get to go to plus two to all stats that much more rapidly. So it is pretty important for her to get the experience component out of it as well as the gold, but end of the day, you just have to make sure that you're keeping her active, you're keeping her farming, and she's still able to use that as a supplement to her income instead of a replacement. Xiaowei down bottom in some trouble, initiated on Cold Snap, EMP, and everything else under the sun. More than enough damage to bring down the Faceless Void and maybe gets another one on the scoreboard, making it 6-2 to two here at the 12-minute mark. And, well, furthering that lead for C-Deck, now over 2,000 gold, 1,500 experience. They'll transition into a little bit of a push in the bottom lane as C-Deck continue to farm. Big stack in their jungle that the Brewmaster and Dazzle will work together to take out. Hmm. This haste rune should be a kill for SYDM. It obviously depends on where he pops it and what opportunity he finds, but uh, this, at this stage in the game with uh, supports at like level 4, that should just be an easy, quick 3-hit combo. But oh, see down RTK bottom. hops in, gets hexed right away! They ah. cold snap! Oh, this poor Batrider turned around on that one stray auto-attack from Invoker. All they need to secure the kill, that ward right there. Thank you, Blaze, sir. Oh my gosh, ROTK can't mm, catch a break this game, and they're not done yet. Haster on Mikasa now used Lanham, caught by the tornado. Mikasa wants to go for the void, can't close the gap, and they will just settle for the Skywrath. That's a two for nil in the bottom, and now this tower 
No, not going to take too much damage. They will back out, but another convincing little skirmish here for C deck. Uh -huh. yeah, just drinking that cherry red haste rune and going in for a nice little dive there. Brings down the lowly support, and yeah, Rubik's only able to get five off of the mid lane there. So uh, that, that hex could not have been precasted the way it was unless they had that observer ward down. They did see it coming. They did know the exact position of the Batrider and, and predicted what he was going to do. So RTK punished for his hubris for the second time in a row. And yeah, this is actually looking really bad. This was a solo mid Batrider that's now fourth on net worth. Yeah. yeah he was off to a, a pretty decent start also. And now we'll see him use the lasso mid lane mm -hmm. onto Mikasa. Had the refraction on. Will be silenced. Completely isolated. And Much this time. Nice clean kill for BG. Yeah, but I, I kind of feel like now they're just plugging holes in a sinking ship. We've got a Blink Dagger coming out on Brewmaster. The Invoker is going to pick up an Orchid, and then we all know what an Orchid Wex Invoker does. He immediately plays it <laughs> Clink style. He just ghost walks into enemy territory and EMPs the crap out of this Medusa. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to see EMP, Cold Snap, Orchid openers on burning over and over and over again. And that means that the supporting cast is going to have to buy, I would say, like half a dozen Sentry Wards. But RTK, no four staff on the mid lane and getting chain stunned down. Yep, they'll commit a primal split for this and using that uh, Storm Panda to try to scout someone else out. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, maybe in some trouble, but maybe he'll live! Dyer, get down a Sentry oh, Ward! One more auto attack, just not enough damage! Oh boy, a close call, but he does live. Yeah, walks home and. Yeah, of course he's able to get off the tower kill that orchid that we were talking about. So he'll be on the battlefield once more very, very soon. Uh, quick movement speed with the wax, and they have no chrono now. Like that was the one thing that I felt like they could maybe get back this early mid game is with the chrono. They're gonna go on Mikasa anyways. The Tugnesis under tower should be pretty good, but I don't know if it's enough. Okay, with RTK it definitely is enough. And the split was stolen. Actually didn't catch it on the mid lane, but Rubik just uh, taking a freebie there as the Brewmaster was out of mana after his initiation. Yep, and it ends up being a very easy kill, even without the lasso cooling down uh, just now. So ROTK can stay a little aggressive here if he wants to, but might need to just sit back and farm up that four staff. Fifteen minutes in, this is that timing where you, you really need the four staff to isolate people. Maybe, exactly as you called it, ghost walk into the jungle, finds burning, poking some mud golems, and right away initiates Orchid, Cold Snap, EMP burning in a lot of trouble. Soul Burn will be enough to bring him down at this point, and it is. Maybe he gets a freebie in the dire jungle and that's an unstoppable streak now six zero and one secured by this invoker yep he is actually gonna stop for a quick wild wing a little bit of experience boost with that midas but he's still gonna get out with plenty of time to spare and again you gotta look at the sports inventories where or are willy rotk lasso right on to maybe lanham's there They've got a sentry ward as he gets the ghost walk off, but again, uh, he just makes it out of range. Is know. this arcane bald enough? No. It is got not. The quads regen. If it wasn't for the quads regen, he would go down there, but he had the right orbs as invoked as well as the right spells. Oh. And yeah, it's the obviously a long time back. The cooldown of ghost walk was buffed significantly. It used to be like a full minute and uh, beyond. I think it was actually 200 seconds. It was his longest cooldown by far, but uh, yeah, now it's just that quick 35 and. Yeah, it allows him to bail out once again. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the rest of Seabeck all grouped up, and they will seal the deal for this bottom tier 1 tower. They force out the Glyph. BG starting to make a movement down bottom, but they'll TP to the tier 2s and will not be able to secure a deny on the tower. Last hit goes the way of Mikasa, and uh, also has a double damage rune in the bottle, probably pulling up for a Blink Dagger, I'd imagine. 1,700 gold towards it, not too far away. Maybe up to no good again as he ghost walks into the dire jungle. Yeah, and they still don't have the sentries down. Like, this is Burning just has to sit under a tower or next to one and uh, have two supports behind him constantly because otherwise it's just going to be uh, ghost walk pickoff after ghost walk pickoff. And it's still, it's not even just that Burning can't farm, it's that nobody can farm. He can still do the same exact thing to any other hero and it will be just as effective. Smoke behind Burning here as BG try to find an aggressive opening but C-Deck have the same idea they're smoked up also headed to the opposite tier one tower in the top lane with Mikasa pushing in the actual lane itself uh, appears we may just see a tower for tower trade Rubik will go ahead and use the brew split once more before it expires out of his possession bottom tier one soon to fall glyph comes out we'll see if BG make a TP reaction back up top and try to defend themselves they do still have a glyph standing but Need to be careful about the pathing here with both teams smoked. 
Uh, yeah, very tough position for BG to hold. Uh, they're all constantly defensive. I like what RTK is doing in the enemy jungle, but we're going to see on oh. mid that Orchid is going to prevent Jai from jumping out of here. And, uh, he does backtrack the finger, Ooh. but that's just uh, not going to change the situation at all. Yep, that's a cute little moral victory perhaps, but good rotation from C-Deck. As the beginning of that fight, we were looking at the Dire Vision and just had no idea. They're totally dark in their jungle right now and on that whole quadrant of the map. Uh, no easy way for them to know exactly what was coming. Tornado flies through, looking for another pickoff on ROTK. Not going to give them the opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that uh, I think Cedar could be doing better here slightly is Mikasa's traps. If she had the second point in, she could be dropping some tracks in the jungle, and they could be showing off where anybody is farming so that the invoker can beeline right there. And also, you could have one trap in the pit, so you can be guaranteed they're not doing anything sneaky there. But, yeah, in this case, they're still controlling the map so damn well that you just gotta mm -hmm. attribute it to map sense as much as vision, and they're able to just suppress BG's potential to bring this game back. They need a huge chronosphere, they need a lot of kills, and they really just need to get <laughs> the, like a gigantic perimeter of sentries. Yeah, uh, some big items have been completed on both sides of the coin. Two Blink Daggers for c -Deck joining the Brewmasters. Uh, now the Lion and the TA have some gap-closing abilities. Burning has his Manta style now. It'll be coming out, and perhaps the slightly larger item for this point in the match, ROTK with his four staff up. So finally an ability to isolate somebody with a lasso and make an escape if he jumps into madness, though. Mm -hmm. Conversely, we'll see more mobility out on this Invoker going for a four staff as his next item following the Orchid. Yeah, and you saw they noted that he was farming on the trap on this ancient camp and immediately the, the invoker is following suit they don't know that he's pushing in right now but as soon as they see him on the map yeah you know he's going to be there and if he's in cold snap range then the burning's going to die yeah going to stay in fog for now as he moves into the neutrals and see that kind of rendezvous here in this mid lane did they just pick up a smoke yeah they sure did lions got one and BG, both teams with the same thing in mind here blaze try to bait with one and then set the trap on the high ground nearby C-Deck will be the ones to smoke and make the first move here with maybe scouting it out. We'll take a look at Radiant Vision and oh, they've got a ward. They see exactly what they're up to. It will get countered. They can probably assume there's an Ascentry oh. there. Maybe still charges in. Zhao Wei gets hexed instantly. Stunned, silence, EMP flies through. Void and Rubik go down first. C-Deck's Brewmaster gets low but survives. They lose a lot of mana, but a fast two for nil secures a skirmish victory for C-Deck once more. Hmm. I'm not sure about them following up with Roche, though. Generally speaking, when you get those two kills, they look at Roche. You got a DD rune on TA. She's got max meld. You, you want it. But they got hit by a stolen EMP, and it took down a huge chunk of HP mana. That's a six wex EMP. So it does almost all the potential mana and damage. And yeah, you just don't want to tango with that too much. So they'll, they'll heal up, and they'll look for another pickup like that, and then follow it up with the Roche on. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously, BG are aware of this. They have some good uh, sentries and observers on the planet. Plateau, uh, just northeast of the pit. Mm -hmm. Yep, there it is. So Dusa just farming up Ancient, still looking at net worth. Uh, Invoker holding that number one seat, but not by much. Even though maybe he's had a very, very good game, and with a hand of Midas, Dusa nipping at his heels. BG have been stacking up for burning, trying to make some space for him, and getting his feet wet with some some damage here. Starting to to come online, and we'll see where he goes after the Manta, Scotty. Probably a, a, a likely item to come out, if not next, and after that. Yeah. But I just, the one thing I'm going to be looking at for the rest of the game is the net worth on the VG supports, and I can't imagine that they're getting, breaking 5k for mm. maybe even the rest of the game. Like, right now, they're ha they're having to buy detection. They actually don't have much in that department. Dust on the Rubik with pair of sentries on the Skywrath, and that's all. And if you imagine the fact that you're there up against a Blink Ooh, Templar Assassin that has so such an advantage, they're going to need Ghost Scepters, too. So they do finally get the gem on a core hero, which is very important, but if they lose that the game's almost over like this mm. they're they're all their hopes and dreams ride on this geometry site oh here we go up top they see maybe they're gonna jump on him bat rider comes in with a lasso four staff maybe will go down to get this started now void with a chrono on the Q. mystic flare to follow they get a fast two for nil garter on the run burning looking to pursue they should huh. be able to find this one mystic snake will chase him down and garter Feels the pain of the Gorgon. Three for nil up top as BG make an easy hold. Yeah, and look at the net worth swing. That is insane. You were just talking about how Invoker was on the top and uh, Medusa was nipping at her heels. Suddenly, 2k advantage here. And Medusa able to get 1,200 gold out of that fight and Invoker actually lost 400. 
So mid lane, huge. Mikasa initiated on by the Rubik. ROTK's there. Silent, plenty of DOT to take down that refraction. And basically a four for Nils. They get another one following that. Burning will pressure the top tier two tower. Radiant have a glyph, but this tower will at least get down a, a, a bit lower here before he backs out. We've got an even game on our hands. BG striking back. They're still at a minor golden experience deficit, but one more fight like that, and they'll actually pull into the lead. Yeah, yeah. it's it's going to be a close one, or at least closer than the previous game, I believe. It still could just keep steamrolling in CDEX's favor, but the problem with the Snowball lineup is that 6.82 rubber band. There's a really good chance that some major kills are going to be going the way of some very item-dependent heroes, and you give that up, and you look at Burning's gold now. 42.86, and the Midas just about to come off cooldown. He can buy anything he wants, or at least work towards it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Scotty has to be something in his mm -hmm. near future, just for the raw stats. I mean, yeah. he's still pretty squishy. Manta helps, but at this point, uh, just needs to beef up and make sure he can survive these fights. The only alternative really is BKB to try to avoid the EMP, because that's obviously <laughs> screwing him over pretty hard as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, yeah, not not really so much of a Lincoln's game. If he wants to go that route, the BKB, I think, is just vastly superior. But there you go, double ultimate mm -hmm. orb picked up, so Scotty will be the first stop off. And already just those two ultimate orbs making a pretty big difference here in the bottom line for Dusa, who is also now level 16. BG yep. kind of grouped up in the mid here as both teams start to posture around the Roche pit. C-Deck maybe just considering a, a push at this bottom tier 2 tower, but both teams in this quadrant of the map. Mm -hmm. But already RTK just kind of making use of the Gemma True site, uh, using his Sticky Napalm on the plateaus so he can make sure there's no ward coverage. And uh, this has forced uh, all the wards for C-Deck to be defensive until they can bring down the Batrider. So they have them on their side of the map, but all the trap vision, um, all the observer vision that was allowing them to invade is now gone, and they don't know really if the Invoker is safe to make a play like before. They're actually just forced to five man, and they still could take the gem from his cold dead hands in a quite, just this moment yeah. if there's the right initiation. Here we go, C deck being the aggressors here. The Brewmaster goes in first, split, stun on the Lanham, Tornado, EMP goes flying through, burning, will get hit by the EMP. Say goodbye to your mana. Now the Chronosphere comes out. Garter's actually the first one to go down. They get the kill on Lanham in exchange, one for one on supports but it's BG on the back foot. Ice Ice now stunned up, will be the second to go down on the side of BG oh. and the Bat Rider isolated inside of the Tornado. They want the Void and burning up around the backside. Needs to be a little bit careful. Here we go, Mikasa getting aggressive. Void coming back in. It's BG with the turn, buyback from Rubik to try to get them back into this fight. Now the Brewmaster with a lot of HP and mana goes in, trying to slow them up as the EMP flies through. Say goodbye to your mana once more. Now burning in a lot of trouble. He'll go down. ROTK doing everything he can, but can't keep his carry alive. Zhao 8 almost goes down. Hops back with the time walk. Survives. And I think this is where C-Deck may want to retreat. Oh, BG respawning. Oh! 5 HP with the magic stick usage! Ooh. Use the magic stick. Survives with 5 HP. Thanks to the fact that that can be used right before the tornado damage actually hits you. And... Mm -hmm. Damn. Double damage on Mikasa is now C-Deck. Move into the Roche Pit. BG, they will contest. Dire Vision is what we're looking at right now. Deuce is still down for 30. They don't have visual confirmation in the pit, but C-Deck will go ahead and back out. Looking at C-Deck's vision here, also completely blind. No vision on the plateau. They don't know where the Bat Rider is, and it's going to cost them. Mikasa caught on the high ground as ROTK Ouch. goes in and isolates him. Beautiful ultimate from the Sky Wrath. Gets the kill on the Templar Assassin. Now C-Deck out of options for the Roche Pit. Will be forced to retreat. Flame Break. Nox guarded to the low ground, but BG not going to be there to pursue and find a kill out of it. Yeah. Nice they, jump from ROTK. Yeah, and that's just the Batrider versus the TA as far as the overall map game is. TA loves to take Roche, Batrider loves to snipe it, and in this case he's able to, to get the upper hand. He's able to kind of use it as a bait, use it as a chew toy that TA would love to, to go grab, but it's it's going to be the Batrider to prevent that and the Chronosphere to come back off cooldown. A long team fight along with uh, that brief exchange, and that is going to be Xiao Wei back with his major cooldown. Now the Rubik did have to buy back for that, but overall he's in a better net worth straights than he was prior to the fight because he is still a lowly level and yeah, he just needs experience really so he gets the he gets up to level 11 he gets his arcane boots and more sentries and can work his way towards that ghost scepter if that's the, the item he chooses mm -hmm. in the meantime medusa scotty coming out in just a moment here from the secret shop and that's gonna make it so the emp doesn't take all his mana away still takes majority of it but he's not gonna be completely dry 
Mm -hmm. And the other thing about uh, having an ability to just wreck Medusa's mana, obviously great to soften her up, but makes her think twice about Stone Gaze. It's a 200 mana cost ability, not particularly cheap, and mm -hmm. if you're already having mana issues with the EMP, sometimes you need to be a little cautious. Though at the same time, if you're going to lose your mana anyway, sort of might as well yeah. use it sooner rather than later. I actually think the Stone Gaze saved the, the, that big team fight that they won uh, towards that whole Dire Ancients area. That was won because of the Stone Gaze got off. It actually hit three people, petrified them all, and they got some decent physical damage. Nobody died in it, but they their assault was hindered. Uh, the mm -hmm. Chronosphere actually went out on only the Brewmaster's Brewlings, as well as the Lion who was already at like 20% HP. So yeah. the Chronosphere wasn't the control that won them the fight. It was the Medusa's Stone Gaze, and she still needs to make sure that that is happening one way or another. It's far more valuable than the HP translation to mana. Yes, sir. Indeed it is. Mikasa picks up a Desolator as his first big damage item following the Blink Dagger. So ready to hop on that Dusa and take away some of that armor. Do so with 19 armor right now. The Deso will still be uh, rather effective, especially if you uh, combine that with the weave effect from Dazzle in these team fights. Dazzle's also picked up a gem, so both teams now carrying a gem of true sight. Batrider did hold his in that last little skirmish, so both teams with the ability to control the map's vision a little more, and both teams with only two wards down on their side of the river around the mid. So these gems definitely having an impact on where these teams are moving and where they feel comfortable. Yeah, another big aspect of this Desolator is just the ability to nearly one-shot a support. If it's not one-shot, it's damn close and it's going to be a two-shot. So, uh, the importance of this Refraction Soul by Rubik can't be understated, though it is now going away, and he'll have to look for something of that nature again. Either the Ghost Walk, the Brew Split, or the Refraction once more. Shallow Grave, I guess, will work too, but he just needs some way to, to not die the second the fight begins. Um, Geometry side on both sides, so I guess map control is kind of a tug of war now, and we do see mm -hmm. the dire plateau is going to be dewarded, and they're going to take this tier too. Yep, see that get an easy tower kill, and dire will not get anything in exchange for it. They get a little pressure on uh, this tier two mid, but not really a hell of a lot to speak of. C deck, yep, get that vision control that you were talking about, and will hang around in the jungle for now. No eyes on anyone from BG. C-Deck feeling safe under the coverage of their ward here, but hanging around in enemy territory. Oh, maybe he's picked up a Maelstrom here on this Invoker. Yeah, I have seen the right-click uh, Invoker build do some work here. The attack speed from your Wex Orbs is actually quite substantial. Uh, it adds up to, like, third, uh, yeah, 42, I believe, mm -hmm. and you're able to get uh, a lot of lightning procs off of that. So going into something, because essentially right now they don't have a way to finish the game. They have a way to take fights pretty effectively if the initiation rings true, but as far as breaking the base wide open, they either team wipe them for it or, yeah. They have to farm. They have to just spread the map and do what they can in the interim of Burning's lives. So mm -hmm. right now the, the Maelstrom is a quick way to farm, quick way to deal some extra damage in the fights, and, you know, it looks cool once you get that static field done. <laughs> Certainly does look cool, that's for damn sure. Uh, Yasha now in the, inv in the inventory of the TA, both teams. I think we've talked about it a couple times now with the gems. Uh, Vision is just sort of this, this awkward tug-of-war is a good way to put it, as uh, you were mentioning. Radiant actually have lost all of their wards. Dire have two down right now, uh, one at the top rune and then one way off the middle of nowhere here for that top lane. Radiant's Will allow Burning to feel safe pushing this lane uh, while C-Deck move around the other side of the map. Uh, not going to help them out around the Roche Pit, and that's where C-Deck are headed right now, looking at Dire Vision, this area of the map totally dark, so not really sure if Seedak are just farming in their jungle, if they're in the Roche pit. With all the lanes pushed in, they don't have a lot of intel, and just like that, Roshan falls, the power of the meld strike, shown before our eyes, Blaze. Yeah, the, uh, the Kreis will take the Dire Tier 2, so that's kind of nice uh, pick-me-up for BG. They will, will tip them over the edge to get two BKBs. Actually, I think Burning had it without, but the Bat Rider was a few hundred gold off of the BKB. Picks it up for himself, and the Medusa does have hers. This is a 10-second BKB charge, and... With that, she gets a full mana pool. She can always, well, I, I say always, she can, a vast majority of the time, BKB out of the EMP, and that will give her a huge amount of mana to work with. It actually will be impossible to bring her down if the EMP doesn't connect. Yeah, the weave is a tool to deal with it, and we've talked about the lion with that blink hex initiation that never mm -hmm. really gets, uh, or n never really falls off, and this is a, a time when they can catch that Dusa before she can BKB. That'll be the, the real nail in the coffin. 
seems to be a recurring theme that whoever gets the initiation is uh, the team that comes out ahead. Is both teams just have such great initiators. One side you've got the Chrono Stone Gaze Bat Rider, and then on the other side you've got the Blink Brewmaster, Blink Hex, um, and you know Tornado. Both teams just with <laughs> really impeccable initiation tools. Yeah, and I mean it's just something that really defines the game right now, and I really think it's got to be the Bat Rider Stone, uh, Bat Rider and Medusa going using their BKBs, uh, the lasso and the stone gaze, and then the fight is essentially theirs. It turns into a pickoff plus some, and it gets good from there. RTK is going to get some good vision up here with the Firefly sees the Bat Dazzle, and there they go. Here we go. BKBs used by ROTK. Burning uses his now. They're going on to Zhao 8. He's taking a lot of damage, but still no kills coming out. It's BG that are on the back foot. The Chronosphere catches Burning inside, and most of his BKB kind of gets wasted here. No kills come out, but with BG's BKBs both on cooldown, this gives Cedek a huge advantage. Now the Rubik isolated by a tornado. Garter comes in, just catches a stun on Burning, but Mikasa blinks forward. They bring down the Rubik with the finger. Now Burning isolated, silenced out of mana. He's down. That's a two for nil. The clap on two as the Brewmaster hops forward, maybe with the attack speed, the Scotty. There's just no hope for BG. Blaze a four for nil trade after that awkward team fight, and they will lose this tier two tower mid, if not more. Just weren't able to do enough in that combo. They did get the initiation to an extent, and they did actually get the, the petrification onto three heroes, but that Chronosphere just broke it up so awkwardly. I really, I don't want to pin it on anybody's back, but Xiao Wei just hasn't performed the way the Void needed to under this much pressure. C deck already broke them in game one, and in this case, they, they knew that they couldn't make too many mistakes, and I feel that two of the Chronospheres um, either could have been a lot better or just in general obstructed them from accomplishing their goals. Now they lose one lane, they will lose the top lane, and at that, I think BG still will fight it out. Like, they don't have to call GG just on that alone, because they do have a Medusa. Medusa will clear this out one way or another. Cre mm -hmm. Mega Creeps, Super Creeps, she can still manage with one more offensive item, but end of the day, the Creeps pressure is always going to be continuous on those two lanes and uh, maybe mm -hmm. just keeps farming. Like he's going to have Mjolnir, Scotty, Orchid, and whatever the heck else he wants. It's just like he's going to be able to build up insanely fast. Obviously the TA is already there and they didn't even need to pop the Aegis for that so that's a nice uh, security blanket. Yeah, only about a minute and a half left on it, but still a nice nice uh, thing to have left over after a team fight like that. Mantle will be completed on the TA. Now Dazzle gets to move into a full mechanism. Uh, BG weren't able to do it in that last fight, and now there's some new toys on the side of C-Deck that they'll have to play around with. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if C-Deck just uh, maybe go back farm for a few minutes here, then just keep the pressure on. I'm not sure that they really need the Aegis to break this last lane of Barracks plays. Yeah, I don't think they, they need it. I mean, obviously, it's uh, probably what they're going to be strategically looking for, just to make it a very safe, guaranteed yeah. move, because you never know what the current sphere is. It could be inhibiting from Medusa from doing her job, or it could be setting up a five-man petrification. You just really don't know. So you have to be worried about it. And actually, they're going very aggressive, all things considered. The lasso could come through, and mm -hmm. I actually think that they could get turned on. It depends on the hex timing from this yeah. lion. Now, Aegis in the inventory of Mikasa. They've got about a minute left, so they really want him to be initiated on so he can come back with full health, full mana. Does finish off the Tier 2 tower, and C-Deck won't push their luck any past that. Though TA still hanging around about 20 seconds on the Aegis. This is where you need to be careful, and C-Deck will do just that. Say goodbye to the Outer Towers for BG as C-Deck get one step closer to the base, and Mjolnir now picked up on the Invoker. That is extremely valuable. I mean, you can put it on anybody that's getting focused, and they're, they're all going to have a bad time. He's alacritying up his, his right card, right clickers like Mikasa. They're attacking fast. He's attacking fast. He just does expire and give a nice little regen rune to SYD and Mikasa, but they just have such a ability to spread the map once more, just like we saw in the previous game. Now, there's still hope for BG. They have some insane scaling and burning, but he needs an offensive item, purely defensive with the Scotty, the BKB, and the Manton. That's all well and good. It's prevented a lot of bad things from happening to him. Like, I keep mm -hmm. on hyping that EMP against Medusa, but at max Wex, that does actually 1580 pure damage and when you actually factor in the mana and how that affects the mana shield. Well, smoke rotations on both sides of the map. BG looking for an opening to find something aggressive. They get a ward down as they leave their base, but still so blind around the map. Now C-Deck moving in. A little bit of vision. They see the Dusa and will be a little more patient as now Burning shows himself in the mid lane, looking at the Radiant Vision. They know BG are stuck inside the base and 
They don't want to face rush it. C deck playing with a lot of control here, Blaze, and will wait for the right opportunity as they know they've got that edge and they don't have to end this right now. They look at the Dire Ancient, see it's been cleared out, and Mikasa actually blocks it here from respawning. So we're just gonna see them wait it out here, probably wait for the AC on the Brewmaster as well. They're confident to buy out with that because it's just gonna be such an impactful aura for them to push in for the win. They've already got the Dazzle Weave armor advantage, but getting that AC on top, BG just don't have anything to compare it to. So that's a, a huge item point of progression uh, that XH was able to acquire out of a, a really difficult start in the offlane. Like, he really wasn't getting much up there. Rotates to mid at level 3, gets a level there, and then goes right back to top when the push ensues, and now you look at him and he's doing really well for himself. He's uh, sitting fourth in net worth. He's going to have this big impactful item on top of the BKB and carrying the gem. Yeah, now the minus armor for C-Deck is getting pretty scary. We've talked about Weave quite a bit, but now you've got Meld Strike, Desolator, and then the AC on top of that. Medusa, uh, tanky for other reasons, but that armor not going to be one of them. And that HP and mana pool going to get cut through pretty damn quick in these upcoming <laughs> fights. Roche yeah. still not into that RNG timer yet, as c -Dex still continue to push this bottom lane in, maintaining a lot of map control, and with that gem, they've still neutered BG's vision. They get another ward down outside of the base on the plateau to make a little bit of room for burning, uh, burning to farm that hard camp, but you can see, very intimidated, kills the big camp, and then slithers right back to the base. Yeah, and that's because his current item slots don't really allow him to carry the TP scroll. The Ring of Aquila has really valuable stats. He could, of course, trade it off, but the bottom line mm -hmm. is is if he gets picked off, the game's over, and a BKB TP is not in his arsenal. So, yeah, yeah just gonna hold, hold it back, and uh, C Duck are doing their thing. They're spreading out, they're dropping the traps, they're getting the vision control, and it's gonna be RTK maybe going for some a little bit of D warding, but they're fully aware. Yeah, here comes ROTK moving out of the base, looking at Radiant Vision now. They've got all these side traps on this section of the map uh, to keep Roche safe. And it will be a fast Roche respawn, about mm -hmm. a minute on that uh, timer, and C-Deck, I think that's what they're waiting for to put that nail in the coffin, is they've just been continually making sure they have control of this area with vision aplenty. Now the Assault Cross is on its way out for the good old Brewmaster. Yep, sells his bottle to get that last 300 gold, and there it is, for, just in time for the Roche fight. This is going to get bloody. I mean, BG literally cannot failed this fight. They have this, I'm assuming they have a smoke available for this one because it's so very impactful. Yes, Ice Ice has one on his own person. They cannot blow this. If this fight goes the way of Roche uh, for C deck, then he might as well just call it there because although you have a lot of great tools and you have some really great scaling, every member of C deck is so damn farmed and when they get that Roche, when they get that Aegis, that's the mm -hmm. game breaker right there. So BG, they have to invade it and Oh, they cannot make a single mistake with this smoke play. Yep. About a 15,000 net worth uh, gap between these two teams right now. Roche has respawned as C-Deck move into the pit. It's all about burning right now. He's got 6,000 gold and getting into rapier territory, Blaze. And this might be a game where you need to roll the dice and do it. But before he can even there react, is. there's the rapier. Roche has already gone down, though. He melted in a matter of seconds. Aegis of the Immortal will go to Mikasa. Yeah, so, I mean, one offensive item, it makes it so that even Mega Creeps will not be the game breaker, but the bottom line is, when they make their high ground defense, they, they have to make it the the most impactful thing they've done this game, because so far it just hasn't cut it. Uh, with that Divine Rapier, and sometimes you call it a Desperate Rapier, but it's a much more stable on item on Medusa, and I honestly feel that that Aegis isn't going to guarantee a loss like it would have without the Rapier. Like, this play is the right mm -hmm. one, no matter how risky it may be. Yeah, I mean, I, the more I see rapiers on Dusa, the, the less risky I really feel it is. I saw Vos pick up just like a 30-minute rapier the other day. Mm -hmm. you know, pretty even game, not like a desperation rapier. Just, I'm Medusa. I can get away with this. And this, I, even though it looks really bad for BG, I, I agree with you. I, I think they are certainly still in this game. And, you know, if this next fight goes very poorly, if C-Deck get a little bit cocky and don't respect the rapier... Uh, this this could start to, to get pretty dirty coming the other way. They're only a lane and a half of barracks up. Yeah, but they're about to be a blink hex away from their demise. Unless the four staff comes through, okay, the, the illusions will scout this out. So, essentially, right there, if the blink hex and the blink AMP comes out before the BKB or the four staff from his allies comes through, burning's dead. They actually get a yeah. second four staff for him just because they know how important it is for him <laughs> to not be cut out of position. They see that and go, that was a little too close for co uh, comfort, Burning. We are going to extra four staff it. What are they up to now? Just two four staffs, okay. 
but that's that's all you need. Yep. So right C deck still, time. still just worth. being very patient here. They're sort of seeing this as waiting for that golden opportunity. They know that they're out farming BG just in general, controlling the map, and not too much pressure for the next minute or two to use this Aegis. They've already chewed through two of the three minutes, so they may try to just start chipping at the base and. I mean, what what's the way to go about this for C deck Blaze? Is this the proper way to handle it? Just sit back and hope that BG make a mistake? Do you smoke up and try to get aggressive? How well, do you handle know. this knowing there's a rapier down? They know how good BG are actually. They're going right here. They're going okay. for the hex that I was talking about. The four staff should be enough, but where are they? The four staff keeps burning alive. Now BKB's used a plenty. RTK hit by the boulder, but makes it back to safety. Now Void oh. comes in. Chrono on just Q. They get the kill on Dazzle, but is it worth it for the Chrono Sphere? Only time will tell. Mikasa in the front lines brings down the faceless Void. The hammer is coming, and BG's in the way. Ice Ice taken down. Lanham shortly after. Burning. He's the lone survivor here. He needs to make it happen. Stone Gaze used, putting out a lot of damage. Mikasa goes down. Aegis will bring him back up. BKB still going for burning, but soon to expire. The Brewmaster taking a lot of damage. They get the kill on Invoker, but now burning. Hexed. Mana being drained. Trying desperately to make it back to the well, but Mikasa oh. will bring him down. The Desolator's got the damage. Now ROTK makes it into the well. Gets stove. He falls. Backside of the fight. The they just can't Burning handle it. No, he didn't. Mikasa at the last second. He oh, no. Rapier TA. That is basically the GG here. More buybacks coming. But, yep, there you go. GG from Lanham. C deck with another very convincing game over BG. Take him out 2 to nil in this best of two series here in the DAC Chinese qualifier group stage. At that last moment, Mikasa actually left the rapier on the ground and walked away. Maybe intentional just to be a badass, but leaving the, Medu the rapier on the ground gave Medusa the chance to buy back and try to go for it. But uh, TA blinks, grabs it, turns it around on the void, and... Uh, that's all she wrote for this one. 45 minute game and both times bullying Burning's Medusa. I mean, that one was a lot closer to be sure, but uh, they just made the right play. I mean, going in at the time where they could get the hexed off, force a very defensive posture from BG, and they had that Aegis. Again, without that Aegis, the second life of TA, they would, would have been repelled, and I honestly give a BG like a 35 to 40% chance of bringing the game all the way back after that point in time with the rapier intact, with the uh, C deck running away. But with that respawn, TA bringing the house down, Mikasa performing expertly, and uh, maybe the Invoker, Quaswex Invoker, really made use of that safe lane farm to the extent that it needed to, to make sure Burning couldn't get out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Burning uh, was, was kept down pretty effectively this game, even with that early hand of Midas, but what a series. We've got plenty more Dota 2 action coming your way for the DAC China tonight. Uh, again, this will be the last cast for a lot of folks in this qualifier from the BTS house as we ship out for Star Ladder tomorrow. Up next will be BG versus E Home, scheduled to start in about 30 minutes. I believe David Parker will be strolling out of bed and joining me for that cast. Blaze, always a pleasure, my friend. Make sure you guys follow him on Twitter as well as myself if you enjoyed the cast. At Blaze Casting, at Zyori TV, and at Beyond the Summit as well to stay up to date with all things happening in the studio and here for the Dota 2 Asia Championship. Until next time, Blaze, we're done. We're done for now, man. GG's was a pleasure and a privilege, my friend. Have a good night. Uh, all right. So take care, folks. Stick around as we're coming back after this break.